Greetings, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our online Thanksgiving Eve service. I hope that you'll indulge me for just a moment as I begin on a personal note. I always feel moved this time of year to express how thankful I am for all of you, and I feel especially moved to do so this year. See, it's not only Thanksgiving time, but my family and I moved here to Oak Harbor 10 years ago this week. I didn't start as pastor here until December 1st, but we moved here to the island the week of Thanksgiving 10 years ago. I'll never forget driving that big moving truck across the very narrow Deception Pass Bridge. Uh, my son Luke was in the cab with me at the time. He was only nine years old uh, at that time. Uh, a lot has happened since then, and uh, sometimes it feels like most of it happened in this past calendar year. Uh, 2020 has been a hard year. Both the politics of this past year and the pandemic have taken the toll on all of us. But as we come to Thanksgiving, I find that I have a lot to be thankful for as your pastor here at Oak Harbor Lutheran Church. To be honest, I've had a few bad days here and there in recent months. I'm sure that you have too. But because of your support and your encouragement, I never stay down for long. I'm so thankful for the cards that I have received and the Facebook messages and the phone calls and the, the other ways that you have communicated your encouragement and support to me. It always seems to come at just the right time, just when I need it, and I'm so thankful for all of that. I wasn't sure what would happen to our congregation financially as we had to radically change our worship life and our programming here at Oak Harbor Lutheran Church, but you have continued to support our ministry faithfully and generously taking those extra steps to get your offerings in, and I thank you for it. I'm thankful for some specific people who have stepped forward in some inspiring ways this past year, people who have really encouraged and inspired me uh, in a difficult time, and they're probably going to get mad at me for mentioning, mentioning them by name, but I'm going to do it anyway. I am thankful this year especially for Kelly and Mary Brock. You all know how much they do for our church as our COVID coaches. They have been instrumental this year in getting our eight o'clock service uh, back in the sanctuary and, and having that being run safely according to all of our COVID protocols. And I'm uh, really doubtful that we ever could have pulled it off without their help uh, serving in that, in that way. So thank you, Kelly and Mary. I'm thankful for the Mazal family, especially Ron and Jen and others who have helped them with our hay wagon chancel. Our drive-in service has been an inspiration and a model throughout our synod now, and that is due in large part to their generosity in sharing that wagon with us, and now recently all the time that they have spent in um, closing it in and winterizing it, uh, preparing it for the weeks ahead. I think now it's nicer than some apartments that I've, that I've lived in before. So uh, thank you so much to the Mazal family and those others uh, who have helped uh, put that thing together. I also want to say how thankful I am for my family. I hope this doesn't sound self-serving, but I want to say a thank you to Amy and to my boys. I asked them to help out with the 1030 service when we first started those drive-in services in the parking lot, trying to uh, limit my exposure to people outside of our household and not wanting to obligate other people to come in and do those kinds of things. So they've been kind of the de facto ushering team for the drive-in service. Um, I asked them to do it and they've done it ever since for months now and they never ever complain about it. And I'm so thankful for that, so thankful for them and their help in that way. The whole staff has been fantastic throughout these challenging times, but I especially want to lift up and say a special word of thanks to our preschool director, Sarah Harbaugh. Sarah moved heaven and earth in order to get our preschool open again. She has put in all kinds of time and effort far beyond her job description, and the only reason our school is open and running safely is because of her heroic efforts. Thank you so much, Sarah. I could go on and on. Our accompanists have been so patient and understanding and willing to adapt, just rolling along with whatever changes come along. The church council has been so great. You all have been fantastic. It makes me hopeful and confident that we will continue to stay strong through these last hard days of the pandemic 
and that we will emerge on the other side of it with a bright future. And so as we pause as a nation to give thanks for all of God's blessings in our lives, please know how very thankful I am for you. I'm thankful for your kindness and your support over these past 10 years now. I'm thankful for how our relationships have deepened over time. I don't want to overstay my welcome here, but I still feel called by God to this place and to this people and believe I still have some productive ministry years uh, with you yet ahead. I'm thankful for your understanding and your encouragement and your help, uh, especially during this past difficult year. As always, I'm thankful for your patience with my shortcomings and your appreciation of my gifts. Thank you for the continued opportunity and the continued honor of serving as your pastor here at Oak Harbor Lutheran Church and for giving me so much reason to be thankful uh, as I do so. God bless, happy Thanksgiving. Now let us begin our service with prayer. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, since I'm naming names of congregation members here on this video, here's another name of someone that I appreciate very much here at Oak Harbor Lutheran Church. Her name is Gerda. There's lots to appreciate about Gerda, like the time that she called me on my birthday and sang to me as soon as I picked up the phone, just like my grandmother used to do. But there's something else about Gerda that I'm thinking of tonight. Whenever you ask Gerda how she's doing, she doesn't respond like most of us do. Most of us have this kind of knee-jerk automatic response when someone asks us how we're doing. We usually say, I'm doing fine. And we just kind of leave it at that. That's usually the stock answer for most of us, but not for Gerda. Whenever I ask Gerda how she's doing, she always says the same thing. When I ask her, how are you, Gerda? She always responds by saying, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, Pastor. In the years I've known her, Gerda has faced some challenging medical issues. I know she had her heart broken at the loss of her beloved husband, John. I know she still has her aches and pains, but whenever I ask her how she is, I always get the same response. I'm grateful. No matter how many times I hear her say it, it always kind of catches me off guard. It's such a lovely thing to say, but I have to say it, it also feels a little bit convicting when she says it because it makes me think to myself, when people ask me how I'm doing, why don't I say that? Our appointed lectionary reading for Thanksgiving this year couldn't be more timely. 
we hear of a group of people who are in quarantine. They're unable to be with their families. They have to isolate from other people. There is this fearful and super contagious ailment out there and no one wants to catch it. So there's these 10 lepers and they eagerly approach Jesus, but at the same time, they carefully practice social distancing. Did you hear Luke remind us of that? Keeping their distance, they cried out to Jesus. So they call out to Jesus while practicing social distancing, and they, they cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Or in the Greek text, they cry out, Kyrie eleison. You see, their cry has become part of Christian liturgy. Jesus simply says to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. They knew what this meant. You see, on the rare occasion that anybody would actually be cured of leprosy, they had to get examined by the priests before they could come out of quarantine. They had to probably pass some kind of test with the priest after being examined. Maybe they had a swab stuck way up their nose, I don't know. As they went, as these lepers went off, they were indeed made clean. And only one of them, a Samaritan no less, turned back to express gratitude. When the Samaritan saw that he was healed, he turned back to say, I'm grateful. He praised God with a loud voice. He fell at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. Jesus asked rhetorically, what about the other nine? Where did they go? Did only one person and a foreigner at that uh, think to turn back and say thank you? And then Jesus turned to this grateful Samaritan and said, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. It's a lovely story in so many ways. We see the compassion of Jesus as he heals these 10 lepers. We see how they get to come out of their quarantine and end their social distancing and be with other people again. We see the Samaritan express his gratitude to Jesus. But it's a story that's also a little bit convicting. Because we all have to admit that we see a little bit of ourselves in those nine lepers who received this blessing from God, but did not express their gratitude. It's so easy for us to get caught up in our own personal dramas that we fail to express our gratitude to God for all that he has done for us. We might even be feeling like we don't have as much to be thankful for this year because of coronavirus. We might be too grumpy or resentful or frustrated or scared to be full of gratitude. We might be holding back on our thanks, withholding our thanks just a little bit until this pandemic is over. I long for the day when coronavirus is over. I pray that these new vaccines will come quickly and knock this thing out. I pray that all who are afflicted with coronavirus will be healed and that also our society will be healed, our economy will be healed, our frayed nerves will be healed. But there's a difference between healing and wellness. Did you catch that in the gospel reading? Nine of the lepers were physically healed, but Jesus only described the one leper who was grateful as being well. And he attributed that wellness to his faith. Go on your way, Jesus said. Your faith has made you well. He was not only healed, he was made well. This Thanksgiving, we join the cry of these lepers saying, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy on us. We might have to wait for physical healing we certainly will have to wait a bit longer for this pandemic to be over. And even then, even when it is over, we'll continue to have other medical problems. We'll continue to have heartbreaks. We'll continue to have various aches and pains in our lives, to be sure. But as we put our trust in Jesus, as we put our faith in him, we find that even now, we are made well. 
We are made well by his healing presence in our lives. We are made well by the peace that he gives us, a peace beyond all understanding. We are made well because through his death and resurrection, he has cured our most serious disease, the one with the 100% fatality rate, the disease of our sin. That has already been cured entirely through his forgiveness. Jesus never socially distances himself from us. As we cry out to him, he comes to us, sometimes with physical healing, but always to make us well. And so this Thanksgiving and beyond, whenever anyone asks us how we're doing, let our response be, I'm grateful. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, I'm going to sing a hymn to you now. Let me grab my guitar. Against my better judgment, I thought I'd try to play guitar on this. This is a, a very, very old hymn. It's from 1636. This is a hymn that was written by a Lutheran pastor named Martin Rinkhart. Uh, he wrote it during a pandemic that was raging in the 1630s. So this is quite literally a hymn of gratitude written during a time of pandemic. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us all from ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, we confess to you that we are not always aware or appreciative of your blessings in our lives. Open our hearts and our minds to the gifts you bestow upon us every day. Give us glad and grateful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, we pray for those who are spending Thanksgiving alone this year or those who are missing loved ones. In the midst of every absence, help them to know your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or struggling or in despair. Bring healing to every hurting body and hope to every hurting heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for the beauty and abundance of your creation. We thank you for this beautiful place we get to call home. We thank you for the food that we will share in celebration of your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We praise you for his saving love. We thank you for the redemption he has won for us at the cost of his own body and blood, saving us from our sin. 
Strengthen our trust in him in the midst of every difficulty we face. Renew us all in the faith that makes us well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts raised to you, O God, we are bold to address you as our Father, as we pray using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Thanksgiving.